Hello, how are you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Nick Evans is going to be the England attack coach through the Six Nations, the man who's currently a coach at Harlequins. We were wondering what Steve Borthwick would do with his coaching team now that he is the new England head coach. So we're starting to get a few pieces put together. So in this video, I'm just going to talk about what Nick Evans could bring to that coaching setup and why how it's developing at the moment is quite an exciting coaching team for us all to get behind. If you are new here, please do subscribe to the channel, like the video and also drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think of Nick Evans' appointment and also just generally about the coaching team of Borthwick, Kevin Sinfield and now Nick Evans as well. All right, let's get into it. So I previously did a video on this channel when Eddie Jones was sacked where I kind of went through the reasons for why it was possibly the right time to get rid of Eddie Jones, but also raised the concern of whether Eddie Jones's sacking meant that England were less likely to win the World Cup this year, if that was the aim. That ship's kind of sailed now. We are where we are with Steve Borthwick in charge. And I think regardless of what side of the debate you fell on when Eddie Jones was sacked, whether you think he should have been given more time or whether you were one of the people calling for him to go for a long, long time, whichever side of that debate you were on, this is where we are. And I think this coaching setup is shaping up really, really nicely. So as I said in the intro, um, it's Nick Evans, the Harlequins coach, former Harlequins player, bit of a premiership legend, really, over 200 appearances for Quinns, won the premiership with Harlequins as a player and also with an assistant coach um, in 2021 as well. So he brings with him quite a lot of experience, but he's also quite young as well. And that's one of the features of this England coaching setup as things stand at the moment. And part of the reason that I think there is a real positivity. There is an excitement to see what can be done because you've got Steve Borthwick, who's the head coach and is 43. And then it's Kevin Sinfield in charge of the defence and Nick Evans, who will be in charge of the attack, who are both 42. So it's a youthful coaching setup, which has been made in the Gallagher Premiership as well, really. I guess Steve Borthwick, he has had uh, assistant jobs with Japan and England before, but with Kevin Sinfield and Nick Evans, both of those guys in terms of their coaching have come from the Gallagher Premiership and Nick Evans as well as a player, even though I know he's an All Black and a Kiwi, um, but in terms of his rugby career, spent a lot of time in the Gallagher Premiership as well. So that's a positive from the RFU's perspective. It's also worth mentioning that Evans is going to go back to Harlequins. It's kind of, at the moment, a short-term appointment for the Six Nations. So in those fallow weeks in the Six Nations, when England don't have a game, Nick Evans will go back to Harlequins. And further than that, let's wait and see what happens. But I must admit, I do wonder, presuming that he does a good job and England's attack looks to be developing, whether we will see him as the attack coach on a permanent basis. We'll wait and see. But why do I think this is a good appointment? Well, there are very different scenarios in terms of when Harlequins won that premiership and where England are now in terms of the club game is so different you with the players week in week out etc etc but I think there are parallels between where those two sides were when Harlequins changed coach in the middle of the year they weren't playing particularly well no one expected them to to win the title that year a lot of people probably wouldn't have even expected them to get to the top four but they had this amazing turnaround and that's kind of what England are looking for now they're looking for quite a quick bounce with nine months to go until the start of the World Cup, just a couple of months to go until the start of the Six Nations. 4th of February is England's first game at Twickenham against Scotland, which I think is going to be very, very interesting. Looking forward to that a lot. Um, but I think there are parallels between those two situations. And so Nick Evans has been in a situation before where the coaching setup changes, you've got a talented group of players and how best to get something out of that group of players. So I am really interested to see what he does with England's attack because England have got good players. I don't think anyone's disputing that. But from an attacking sense for a long, long time now, we have been questioning the blunt attack England have been putting out week in, week out. Just a real lack of potency in that attack. So can he get something out of it? He's been in a situation where he's been part of a coaching setup, hasn't been the main guy, but he's been part of a coaching setup that have needed to do that before. Can he do it again? I think it's going to be interesting to, to see if he does that. And importantly, can he create an attacking style of rugby that gets the fans out of their seat? The Twickenham crowd has grown frustrated over the last couple of years, certainly the autumn, but beyond that as well, of just what England were producing. Can this be a team that the fans really start to get behind again? Also, it's always hard to know when coaches come in what it's going to mean for individual players. But again, Nick Evans has been part of that coaching team that has got the best out of Marcus Smith. And there's been a lot of focus on Marcus Smith in an England shirt, just not being able to pull up trees in the same way that he has done at Harlequins. I think part of that has undoubtedly been the game plan. 
But also I just think there's a step up to international rugby. There's a lot of focus and magnifying glass on him and Owen Farrell playing together. They actually haven't played together that much this autumn, or say this autumn just gone. The most recent autumn, which was a couple of months ago now, was probably the first time we saw them play together on a consistent basis because of injuries and and unavailability, particularly from Farrell's perspective. So they haven't played together a huge amount. But does Nick Evans have the keys to unlock an attacking system which is going to benefit Marcus Smith if... Marcus Smith is still the England fly half. I've said in previous videos on this channel, because Steve Borthwick is coming in, will it be George Ford that comes back into the fold? I don't think we've seen the last of George Ford in an England shirt. He was pivotal to Leicester. We see this season in the Premiership what Leicester looked like without George Ford. I think there's a chance he could come in and be the fly half. But if he doesn't, if it's still Marcus Smith, I think Nick Evans is a very interesting person to have on that coaching team who knows how to run an attack which will get the best out of Marcus Smith. Um, what does it mean for selection more broadly? I've kind of already touched on that in, in terms of George Ford and even if those other Harlequins guys, not just Marcus Smith, but I don't know, a Caden Murley, who's been part of the England squad but hasn't received um, his first cap. Someone like that, is he? could he get an opportunity because he's got a coach who he's worked with who knows what he can do in those selection meetings? A few other final things just to touch on. Eddie Jones has done an interview in The Guardian as well, uh, which is a really interesting read. I would uh, encourage you all to, to go and find that one. Um, where he goes through a few different things, but in particular for this video, what was interesting, he spoke about perhaps making a few mistakes with his appointments of assistants towards the end of his tenure, which it's interesting to hear him say that. I think most England fans, we'd all sit here and say, well, yeah, obviously we kind of knew that the performances of the team weren't as good and there was much more of a revolving door in terms of the coaches, particularly when you consider the coaching setup he started his reign with, which I think was really, really strong. It did seem to tail off a little bit. But that links to what Steve Borthwick is doing. And at the start of his tenure, he is putting together a coaching team, which at the moment I'm really excited about. I think a lot of England fans will be excited about as well with Kevin Sinfield, who's been impressive with what he's done as Leicester at the start of his career. But even so, I think a guy that a lot of the players will want to and enjoy working with and also Nick Evans as well. It's youthful. It's exciting. What can England do? Only time will tell, I guess. Just a final point to finish off with this. Martin Gleeson has been the current attack coach. As far as I'm aware, there hasn't been any um, confirmation of what Nick Evans' appointment means for Martin Gleeson. I am still in Australia at the moment, so I'm not 100% sure. If I may well have missed something, let me know in the comments. But I believe that's the case. Um, but I would imagine that at some point we're going to see Martin Gleeson uh, head out the exits at Twickenham. But for the time being, as I understand it, he will still be there in some capacity or hasn't officially um, been removed from his post at the moment. So that's where we stand at the moment, uh, Nick Evans joining Steve Borthwick and Kevin Sinfield in that England coaching setup. Drop a comment down below. What do you make of this? How are you, how are you liking what you're seeing England have in terms of a coaching setup heading into the Six Nations? Do you finally have a bit of a spring in your step again when you think of the potential of this England team? I certainly think there's that perception at least. Let's see what they deliver on the field. Do subscribe if you haven't already. If you are new to the channel, always appreciate the support. And as always, see you in the next one.